the creative process needs chaos, intuition, improvisation, but it also needs reflection. We found a base where we could order our thoughts and allow our rational part to participate. Tigris Studio was the place where we put together all the material collected on each of the trips. Recordings, samples, images. The studio is a place full of tools that let us materialize the sounds we had in mind. state-of-the-art mixers, all kind of vintage instruments, tape echoes, synthesizers, classic amps, and of course, our video room where we experimented with the image the same way we did with sound. The lighting, the atmosphere, every detail counts and affects the final result. Genma represents the kind of collaborations we wanted for the album. We were not simply looking for musicians, but people who would get involved in the project and contribute their own point of view. We knew that this creative chemistry was an essential ingredient in the album. We wanted to capture the contrast that makes Australia a unique place. On one hand, the hostile nature, the wildness. On the other, one of the most prosperous civilizations on the planet. It's been one of the, the most creatively inspirational weeks that I've had in my life. Just to see how things were done, to get the experience that I did, working with you guys was really amazing. And it was so much fun as well. Like I thought it would be way more serious. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but that, it, that that's was that's actually how think. it worked because it was just so laid back and awesome. I feel like I learned a lot. You know when you have those feelings and you're like, you're exhausted and you get into bed but you've got the biggest smile on your face because you're like, fuck, this is what I want to do. This is awesome. In a song inspired by Australia, the didgeridoo was almost mandatory. Its raw and organic sound was a perfect match for the concept of this track. My music is always contemporized, but I put a flair from the teachings of the elders in northeast Darnham Land into my work so that Aboriginal people can hear that and go, that guy's done his time. At the same time, I keep it respectfully contemporary. Yeah. <laughs> 
The family of the owner of the didgeridoo, Jalu Garawiri, and you can look him up online. He taught me personally. He's the boss of didgeridoo. Wow. It's called Yidaki, which means emu's throat. There's only a tiny place where, it, it, which is the home of the didgeridoo in Australia, in northeast Arnhem Land, a place called Yirrkala. On the song lines, they're called, and what one person would have duck, another person would have um, pig, kangaroo, whatever, and they would trade. And didgeridoo was traded along the little tiny thin strip between Catherine and Yirrkala. But the rest of Australia never had a didgeridoo. Wow. No. It's been super fun. <laughs> Australia shows a fascinating but conflicting fusion. Past, present and future, all at the same time. That's why we wanted to write a track that reflected all these dimensions. A song that combines retro sounds, futuristic aesthetics and the organic touch. A story about the ghosts that haunt us. Shame. 